don't like just a spur drive because I get too aggressive and it just starts to drill out a hole. Uh, the screw center I could have brought, but it was, you know, one of those things. This is a Elio or Elio, E L I O. Uh, yeah. The guy's from Canada. No, Canada. Um, what did you say? He's from Canada. Yeah, yeah. Uh, out there, Saskatchewan. Yeah. Or out there somewhere. I forget his name. But it, this was twenty, thirty dollars. I've had it a long, and it, it's great because these are adjustable. So when you're doing, I mean, it doesn't matter with a block of wood. But if you're doing something like this and you want to center it so that your your bottom is going to be in there, I sometimes have to maneuver it around. So these points will help me to, to do that. I'm not going to bother with that tonight. It's just that I, I was in my comfort zone, so I thought I'd bring this. Um, this is maple. What I did was I took a slice off because I didn't want to make too deep a bowl. And just to give you an idea of the material, I think it's maple. Um, it's been, like, this is another piece that's been in the shop for, I found it in the corner when I moved the whatever. And, oh, and this. Do you recognize this? <laughs> I see two Forbes original. It's an Ikea light. He made me the base. I put the rod in there so I wouldn't trip And it's mind. just very handy to. It's, it's really handy to, to put light there. As I get older, I tend to need more light and stuff. So, and it's not in the way. Not in the way. I have done this. While you're setting it up, I might add that like, instead of spending, I think he's getting a lot more than that 35 bucks now, those helio uh, uh, drives. You can take a face plate. Oh. And just take a standard face plate, drill two holes in it, uh, tap, tap, tap the holes in it. Uh, there you go, you made your own. Face I, plate. I brought one in. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Um, you can do the same thing with a couple of carriage bolts. Yep. Uh, I would go with three, not four, because the odd number tends to, to hold them better. Uh, but it's, it's just one of those crazy ideas. It, I've never really used that. I just brought it along as a, as a sample. Um, and to sharpen the, uh, the bolts, I, I put it on a gray wheel. You know, it, it didn't use my, my sharpening system. Um, certainly not a belt tank. I'm just going to see what's nice with this is that it will uh, nobody's going to report me, right? I get con concerned if he's not being safe, he's not wearing a face shield. I was going to wear my smock and it's too warm. And and that thing. This will go down to zero. Okay. I tend to, I'm not very fast with turning, but when it's out of round like this, I like to get the, the rough stuff done. I don't always true up the whole top here. It tends to, I don't know, I get tired of it. So what I do is I'll, I'll come over here and I just start shaking the bowl. Yeah, I feel much better. I've been nervous as hell for this thing. I don't know why. And somebody mentioned before that I have a really long handle and it's, it's really a long tool. I really like the idea of putting the handle up against my hip. And I tend to bring my, my elbows in and I'll steer the tool just by pivoting my body and see if I can bring this up here like this. I'm on nice, soft, smooth wood back here so that I can simply come around. I'll go all the way.
So right away, I've got my bowl shape. So now all I need to do is put the tenon on there, and I can put a lid on that. So I'll just come here, I'll usually, I'm using the bottom wing. I tend to um, align the, the face, the bevel of the tool to the wood, and I'm just pivoting my body so that I just pivot into the wood. And I've got a number two jaw, so I'm gonna bring that around, and now I've got this great big flat area, so I can finish making the shape of the, of the bowl. And there's a guy who, um, oh, this is sometimes where I'll stop and I go, ooh, I could put a rim on that. So I could come around and bring this over. And now if I wanted to get fufu, I could, you know, I don't, I'm the traditional brown and round. That carving of the feet there secured me of my, for a while. Um, I, I make stuff, I don't embellish afterwards, but this would be something that I could take a knurling tool or something and make a, a band to it or something. And when I'm making Christmas ornaments, I find that those let up times are like, oh wait, this um, onion shape now has a beginning of a, another, another onion or something. So I'll stop there and then go on from that point. Um, but I'm not going to do that tonight, so we'll just get rid of this. And just for later, I'm just going to clean this up. My tenons tend to be about a quarter of an inch or a little bit less, and I'm a freak for wanting that 90 degree to be very, very crisp. And the, the, the round tip of a half inch bowl gouge with the side grind of it that's on there doesn't really get me in tight enough. So there are those that would use a, um, a skew or a parting tool and I see them come in this way. It scares the Jesus out of the yard going this way with the party tool. Uh, the skew, it's just really, really tough on the skew. So I've, back in 03, I made a hat with Johannes Michelson. And where well, you're going to use the 3 8 and the half inch bowl gouge by Jerry Glazer. Well, honey, I gotta get one. So I bought the two. This is from 03. And it, you know, it's, this is the Jerry Glazer steel. They'll bury me with this. But I can, with that little grind, the little tippets on there, I can get right in, that's just the, the tip of the tool, and I can make that really sharp. I had a little too much of a bevel there. But you just come in and, and clean it up, and that's nice and crisp, so I can get there. It's I can do the same thing. This is uh, hand sharpened, because back in the day, he would, I, I spent days just grinding with a bolt in a, in a handle. I took this out and put a bolt in there, and I wanted to get that shape. And then 10 years later, he comes out with his jig, which now I don't like it because, well, it makes it too simple. But, um, it's, it's that kind of a deal. So, oh. is there enough? That's one thing I didn't right here. know. On um, the knockout part? Oh. It's under, it's under the motor. <clears throat> yeah, it's on the side. Okay. Thank you. Huh? 
Oh, what? Oh, you mean? I said, that Chucky looks familiar. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's what we're talking about, guys. If you're not familiar with the one-way check key, hold, hold that thing up. It's huge. How can I they walk away with one of those things that? accidentally. You can do it on purpose. You drop it into your Yeah, but if you don't. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it can have, like, yeah. it falls into the shavings. Um, the thing that used to really get me was when you'd bring the equipment there and you had, back in the day, the Nova 3000 had a very small handle here. And you get guys much bigger than me, and you get it. It's, it's got an elbow to it when it comes back from the fair. It happened to me one year, and I never sent my tools back there. Did you ever get the, the keys back? No, but I know. Sure, one for the uh, Alan Mitchell and one for myself. It happens. Al's used to it. I'm going to hear about it. <laughs> um, I'm going to pull that out. Because I'm not used to... This is going to be different for me. Um, my, my head will, will pivot. And it's amazing how you get very, very accustomed to that kind of posture. And I, I also have a, a little mini leg. But it's a very short bed, so I can just stand at the end of the bed and turn. And it's it's incredible how the um, things. You heard, you know, you heard David's uh, technique of sitting in the saddle. Chiefs. <laughs> so you always get a little bit of run out, um, and this now I'm going to face it off, just because I want to calm down a little bit. And I'm a little too high. So in the bowl, it's always the same thing. You know, the other reason for a nice long handle is to start here, and I've got ample leverage space, so I can just keep on. And gives me the opportunity to I just go into my zen mode. Alan Watt taught us that every one of those is a practice for the last one. Yeah. Every one of those practices. Yeah, and that's where it came it comes from. Is that yeah this time you know okay so I'm just roughing but now alright now this is You clean that up or you practice that. Well, my God. You know, you, if every practice, I find myself, if I'm making something, I want to get it done. But if I'm turning, it's done. This is all I want to make. I, whatever is on there, it's just, I'll sometimes go in the shop and. and leave it. I just make shavings. I make a mulch for the garden. Because my, my front yard, she declared several years ago that we now have soil. We no longer have dirt. That's, if you're a gardener, yes. Yeah. And I will also, um, out here, talk about this. You've got end grain, side grain, face grain, all this stuff, and we talk about end grain terror and stuff, and you've got the end grain is going here. Well, I like to think of it as here I'm going through the side of the straw, okay, the face grain, and it's always the same thing, so when it's, when the tool is into this mode here, and I'm just pushing forward, I get no reaction. It's all the same kind of wood all the same texture of wood, or the same striations, if you will. But once I make a little bit of a turn, now I've got side grain and grain. And that's where I start getting the bucking and stuff. So that's where I'll oftentimes, I'm going in, and I, I hold underhand, because I'm so used to showing people what I'm doing and stuff, 
so I want them to be able to see. But I much prefer this in a way because then I can really do it down. But when I get into here, and now I've got to make this turn, this is where it sometimes ends up grabbing and the piece goes flying off. So I'll stop here and I'll come back. And I stay to the side, I'm not over here. I'm, I physically move my whole body and now I just focus on this little area. That was one of Andy's practice ones because I had just a little bit of a, of a line. Let me see if we can add this. Look at that. And I, I try to get rid of all the lines. So that would be, there's no let ups, there's no burnishing, there's no nothing. I've got three um, bevels on here so that I, my heel isn't hitting the wood and scoring it in the back. It's one of the, uh, one of the things that I picked up from everybody. And they're all talking about it. One of the, I, know I went too fast. I went too fast on the outside. Let's go back over here. We talk about rubbing the bevel, and I think it was Stuart Daddy who corrected us in saying that rubbing, you know, the, the words that we choose to use to, to say something, it, it, it depends on how it's being perceived. The message, the messenger, and, and the, the message or the receiver. Uh, there's there's got to be some kind of connection there. And sometimes we hear the word rub the bevel, and people will like, I'm rubbing. You know, and, and they're, they're rubbing so high that they're giving it, a, they're, they're scoring it. So he suggests that we use gliding the bevel. But that conjures up all kinds of gliding on what? If I'm gliding because I drive in snow, it means I'm out of control. I'm, I don't feel like I have that full control that he has. I don't know how he does it, but on the outside like this, to get rid of that, I'll put the, the tool up against the wood and then I'll roll the tool onto it until I, I see the shavings coming over the, um, the edge. And I think through all, all that stuff, get rid of all those marks. But now I've got all these little lines. I'm a real big believer in David Ellsworth's shear straightening, where using the bottom wing of the tool, and I can. And this is where I go back so far that, you know, he's got the, uh, it's not a DVD, it's, uh, what was it, a tape, a VCR? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, that's how far long ago. Um, and he says, uh, he, he's got them they're piled up on, and he, he, I don't remember how he put it, but it made it sound like he, he, he just had his first child. You know, the, the, these little, Angel here, shavings and stuff. And I, another time where I, I gotta do that. So I went out to the shop and I must have made a bushel of these little shavings. And this is where you have to stop me because I really enjoy doing this. And I could just, I can reduce this thing down to a thimble just by taking all these little shavings away. But see the little shape, the little shaping I can do down even dangerously close to the, to the chuck. Okay, but anyway.
So I would, I, that's why I went a little too fast before. So now we're back inside. And all of these are a quarter, five sixteenths. Um, I tend to make my pieces a little bit thicker. Uh, then some people would think, well, that's really, you know, that, that's, you're not really showing that you're, because thinner is better only to a wood term. Uh, the, the, the only people that really appreciate the, the real thinness, something that's going to blow over if the, if the wind comes in through the open window is another wood turner or somebody who really gets into that kind of thing. But something practical, this piece fell on the floor. It's probably, no lie, this is close to 15 years old. And I really don't care if it breaks because it's the, even that, if you burn it, because this is what I'm looking for, is another turning blank. The, the finished product is not what I, what I um, get encouraged by. But this will survive all kinds of abuse and, and usage. The only reason why I did that is because it still, still have some lines. They're just annoying. So I come in and I'm going to want to... I've got to finish this, right? Okay? Bear with me. <laughs> I told myself on the way in, you better be careful not to make the opening of the bowl bigger than the blanket you have. Um, because we can also use, now they're both the same size. Who would think? Okay. You have that piece behind your uh, right foot on the floor. It's yeah, that's true. Yeah, we could make a small thing with this. Um, another way to, to hold, besides putting it between centers, is you can get bigger, since that's a lot of ways a ton to carry, you can also get bigger jaws. So you could hold this right into the jaws, and I may do that just for, uh, just for fun. Um, all right, we'll deal with that later. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'm going to have to take this off, put it back on, and round up the, the, uh, the lid. Sorry, but this is going to have to go. You can still see. I can just put it. probably use a depth gauge. Um, some form of measuring. Um, I don't like measuring very much, but there are those. Some of us are engineers. And so that inch and a quarter. Yeah. And but I allow you this is what I usually do. You know, I'll, I'll do that sort of thing. Just to mess with everybody, I was going to bring in a metric ruler. I, um, in my, my, last, my last job, we were installing glass partitions, and the stuff was coming in from Europe. So naturally, everything's metric. Some of the stuff coming in from Canada is metric. Uh, so we were actually using metric tape measures. It's amazing how quick you can pick it up, but it's just one of those comfort zones. And there was a guy from uh, 
the Netherlands that had come to train us for installing this system, which was, I don't know, some kind of STC rating of, it was incredible. You could be on one side of the glass wall. I could be yelling at you, Jim, and you could see my lips moving, but you couldn't hear me. You might hear some of my voice, but you wouldn't recognize who I was. Um, and respect the millimeter. So, given that, that I, there's a point of that story in that when I come to do this sort of thing, I'm relaxing, so I really don't care if it's 57 millimeters or two and three quarter inches. It, you know, it just doesn't, uh, oops. Now this is where, down, when you get down this deep in the bottom, you may not be able to grab the the bevel to rub to get into the, a clean cut. Schools of thought. Easy wood tool. I don't have one, nor will I have. Um, but the, Jimmy Clues does one where he puts a, I think it's a 45 degree first, then he grinds the heel, and then he puts an unknown front bevel on it. And he'll do his undercutting with that. I'll pass it around after. But with this, it tends to be a little aggressive. But you can actually, you, you can hear, right? It's the cutting. It's a very, very small shave and it's coming off. Very clean cut. Um, I'm way over the tool, but see the, see the shavings that were coming out of there? So it, it's giving a real controlled cut as opposed to scraper. And I can take this. I like to use them on the on a bias. And I only do the very, very bottom. I very rarely come up the side of the bowl. I've yet to get a finer edge or a finer finish, rather, off this tool than I can from a bowl gouge, uh, from a gouge. It's, I find there's, there's as much tear out. So right in the very bottom, and just up the side a, little, a wee bit. Um, and then that's as far as I go. So that's the, do I pass them? That's the one with the, the undercutting. Um, and like I said, it's, if I remember right, the first angle is 45, you, you, and it's simply on your uh, tool rest. And then afterwards, you raise it up to give it the heel relief, and then you bring it down, and he just kind of like lays it flat and then raises it up just a, a scooch, and then just rolls it on there. So it doesn't, and it doesn't really matter he says because the, the bevel is so small that you're only riding a 32nd, a millimeter of, of uh, space, so it's no big deal. And what I'll do is I'm gonna chew up. This one, I'm, I've already got a tenon. I prepped it at home, so because you've already seen me make a tenon, you, you don't have to do that twice. I am trying to do things in a sequence. Forty-five minutes left. Forty-five minutes left. <laughs> I've been rehearsing that line all day. <laughs> I'm what speed are you at this thing? I'll tell you exactly. I'm at 1,500, I tend to be between 1,000 and 2,000. Um, at home, 1,000, sometimes less. And it, it's only because right now I'm, I'm you know, on my cadence. And the faster, because I, I don't want to bore anybody, so I realize that 
Now remember before I said that I don't usually true it up um, first, but here I have a goal in mind. I want to get a true surface all the way around because I still had some bandsaw marks on Can you there. tell us which is going to be the top of that and which is going to be the bottom of your top? This is the bottom. No, of your top. Oh, um, this will be the, this will be the inside of the lid. Okay. So the tenon is the, is oh. the top. I want to make it, I, I just want to be quiet. When Marcel is quiet, something's wrong. No, it, it's because I, what I'm trying to do is take off as little as possible. Here we go. Okay. So now I get an idea of what my opening can be. So while I have it on there, I can still save that. But I'm going to flatten this out. So now, why am I doing it like this when I could go the other way? My two reasons. If I'm doing the bottom wing, which I feel very, that's how I form the tenon, I'd make a lot of cuts that way. I'm pushing toward, the, into the chuck. So I'm not ripping anything out, I'm just, the, the force is going up against the chuck. If I'm going at it this way, it, the, the, in my mind, okay, humor me. Um, it, it will tend to want to pull it away. Especially if there's, I don't know if you noticed, there was one, I try to stop the, the machine, but it's, it's bigger. See here where I was cutting here, but I'm not cutting here, so I can sometimes catch it um, in that void, and then all of a sudden I get a big, so I get this, this surprise, and the last thing you want in a demonstration is a surprise. So I tend to, I can feel my way into the wood a whole lot easier doing it this way, and then once I get all this done, then all right, I'll go back to traditional, and now I'll just take it all down. I will get a better finish on this surface now that I've, because I'm rubbing the double, I just want to get rid of that spur hold here. Okay. <clears throat> Begin with the end in mind. You've got to have a plan when you're doing one of these, and my plan now is I'm going to make it so that I don't have to. I'm going to reduce it close enough. I, um, so that you don't get mixed up. Let's reserve, let's reserve, these are both the same size tools. Uh, this is hand sharpened, this is on his jig, uh, Michelson's jig. And when I'm using a smaller tool, my world gets a little bit smaller and I get a little more um, closed in. So this forces me to focus a little bit more. And I, I just want to take off just that little nub that's going to just fit inside. And it would be a whole lot easier with calipers and measuring devices and everything else. But now I'm in my shop. Dog's taking a nap. I'm having fun. See, it's almost there now. So, I'm gonna leave this. Let's call this good. So now, this would be the inside. You can see the spirals and stuff from the 
tool vibration. Let's just clean this up. So now the lid is all set. And I don't do much for it. You don't protect that surface with the jaws at all? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I just want to make sure it's going to fit first. Okay. It's still my like thunder. But you can't do this with. Well, I don't know about all of the chucks in the world, but the one way is incredible, the latitude that it has for opening and closing. I'm going from, these are number two jaws, and this is probably, I don't know you got this. this is probably a tree and a half. Yeah, there's the sheetrock duck. A tree and a half. Um, so I'll be able to, yeah, let's go where you were, you were going to go. That was a lot of different ways. You can use uh, rubber bands, I find it too mushy. Um, old mouse pads, that kind of thick uh, router pads that you can buy here, or just a piece of cotton muslin. And I just, I'll put this on here and I just shove it in there. and tighten it down. It'll hold just enough. Sometimes I'll wet it to give it a little more grip. I always bring up the tail stop. You know what, we could just finish the whole lid right now while we're doing this. You often use the bowl as your chuck. Yes, jam, jam it right in there. Um, there are a, a number of <laughs> See, I don't know what your problem is. All my stuff's coming back. Uh, but for tonight, let's do it this way. There are a hundred different ways of going, going about doing, making one of these. And one of the things I have to remember is just to snug it up enough. And if you notice, I, I, um, it was a circular piece of cloth. Only because I've used square, and then I'll cut off the, uh, the excess. But I'm going up against the jaws. The edge of the tool doesn't like that so much. And then you can fold it over. But it, this just makes it a whole lot easier, because now I don't have all that stuff in my way. And I can shape up the ah, the um, clock, you know. I'm at the very edge of the chop. Jaws, so they're not going to. They're not going to behave very nicely, but. And you heard the, the rattle. Some people would just ah, it'll go away. If you hear that, pay attention, figure out where it's coming from. Because they ain't going away. Because yeah, they ain't going away. Right. First time driving. Okay. So now I'm just going to shake my lid. This one's going to have a handle. 
because I have all the texture material. Now remember, I'm a mulch maker, right? So I'm making shavings. I, I don't care about the, the cost of the material. Start off with the, the flute 90 just to engage the wood and then kind of like a spoon to scoop it up and continue to cut in. So making the bowl is secondary, the lid is what you're going to see. And here's where the, uh, the whole idea of the practice, each cut is a practice cut for the neck, especially in here where things get a little dicey with a half inch bowl guy. Dicey being because it, it's tight. But you know, it's funny how we, I've changed, you can say we, but I've changed from all I ever used was a 5 8 bowl guy. And now I very rarely take one out unless I'm turning a 16 inch or a larger bowl. Uh, I do everything with this size. So I want to make this now, I, I want to make this thin, but we've got some structural issues. It's side grain. So if I make it too thin, then I can just snap this right off. All kinds of, yeah, but you could use um, CA glue. You could harden it up. You can pentacle, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff. Well, I'm, I'm not into making chemistry sets out of wood trimming. So I just, I go as thin as I think it's going to be, and I'll look at the structure now, and my grain is going through enough that I think it's going to hold, but this was a very happy piece of cherry. The, the annular rings are like a quarter of an inch in diameter wide. It, this thing grew fat and happy very quickly. So I'm just going to clean it up. I'll bring that down a little bit over here and I'm going to go back to my other idea there of what I was saying before when I get into a tight spot I'll use a smaller gouge so I same same grind just a smaller piece of steel you want to be careful yeah, that if you come around and you hit the other side of the of the, the tool that you're not really scooping in. You want to be in the down cut all the time. But if you're at a good angle with the tool, you can finish off in like a, a shear scrape. You know, see how you can... So I can... Somebody mentioned before of uh, uh, Cindy Drozda making the, 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 the finials and she'll back drag her spindle gouge to, to do the sides. And Ashley, from North Carolina, Ashley Har Harwood, someone, she does the same thing. Not box elder though. They're all using this black wood. Um, it must be ebony or something. Very, very hard because this little thing right here. This is uh, Amarillo. And by the time I got down to here, it was chattering around so much and I was using a skew on this. Uh, 
I didn't, I didn't dare go any thinner than that because it's a little more coarse. But I can make this, so now I'll, I'll, I try to get to where my fingers will fit in there and it'll be comfortable. Kind of have to bring that around and, oh yeah. One of the things you have to remember too is that I've got the live center in here. So I've got a good 3 16ths of an inch of a hole that I don't want to have. Now there are those who would tell you, well, you can just put some stuff in there, coffee grounds, grass. I don't do that. And I want to leave the live center as long as I can, only because I don't trust, because the jaws are, they're fully extended. I, I, I haven't, I've closed them down maybe a third of a crank, which isn't very much. There's hardly anything holding that there. Um, and again, I don't want to freak anybody out. So, but that can bring this real, I can bring this down a lot. And I brought it along just to show um, you can also detail gouges are uh, spindle gouges. Um, spindle gouges without as deep a uh, flute. And it'll, it'll let me get in here so that I can undercut the side here. But you really got to be, I was trying that lefty. I want to get as close, as tight to the uh, to the wood as I can. Always shut off your leg before you move the tool. Rest. Just because I want to get a little more radius. Now because I can't see them, I gotta try to get all that out of there. there we go. Okay, so that'll that'll work. Now it's time to just I got a little tool mark here. You know. All right, there's gonna be tool marks, okay? Sorry. I just want to try something before I... Alright, that's all we good. So I'm going to go back to the 3 8 bowl gouge. And I'm going to keep my hand here just to... Jump it. Just kissing the wood. Trying to get rid of that hole. Damn. There we go. now is tight. Okay. So see how it's, I still have some play in the bowl, so now I can go back to the bowl. So why don't we get that around, close this up. So until that comes back, I'm not going to, to go to the top of the bowl.
Oh, the head. Yeah. Right, the head slides. Is that what this does? Okay. I'm, uh, I'm also, I'm using, um, yeah, him, Thompson steel, but when you, when you get down to the bottom of something like this, having made all of this, I would want to go and at least kiss the, the stone with my, with my gouge. So I, I just switched tool. This is a, oh, this doesn't have a back grind. I'm just gonna deepen this up a little bit. And at those practice cuts that we were talking about, it's very, a lot of people will, they go in and they'll, they're, they, they'll chop away at, at their bowl. You want to try to get as, as smooth an arc and as all in one pass so that you don't get all those little tick marks. And then typically, right in here on the inside, I can feel where I'm going from three-eighths of an inch to almost three quarters of an inch down the bottom. It's always, I, I've always done that. I'll end up with this being very, very thick. And learned the hard way when I was turning green bowls and I would be religious about uh, covering them all up with anchor seal and making sure that it was gonna dry real slow, pull it out and I'd always get a crack down in here because after a while I started to realize, oh, it's a whole lot thicker there. And um, that was the reason was that it would, I would leave them thick because I wasn't transitioning right. I was turning, I was starting to make my turn too soon because I'd made a few flower pots and I got a little worried about making the bottom too thin. So you overreact for a while and then you come back to the equilibrium. That's why I hesitated about changing because the, the grind on this is different. I'm just going to go back to this. Oh, right. I thought for sure I had a great big hack in there. Is that lid anywhere close? Okay. Are we done with it? No. No. Give me one second. I just want to dry. dry. I just want to see how much to. All right. So. See, if I, if I wanted to, if I never wanted to take this off again, I could smack it on there and it would seal itself on. Um, which one is it? I think it's this, this lid. There's no glue. I pushed it on and it was about three quarters of the way and I thought, gee, I wonder if it's gonna go all the way on. So I gave it a little bit of a twist and it just, I heard a, that squeal and it sat. And then I tried to pull it back and I said, okay. Enough. That's it. I'll put a little bit of finish on it and the finish will hold it. So now all I want to do is take one tiny little hair off it. I'm not going to do it just yet. I've got, I've got a little bump over here. There's going to be a, an edge here, a sharp edge, 
before the lid so I can reduce this down in size. So I'll come up, come back out here and do this first. And actually, when you're rolling an edge on a bowl, you want to be very careful that you're rolling the tool a lot more than you think you have to, and that you don't just roll and keep going straight in. I don't know how many times I've caught the back side of it because I haven't gone over enough. And I get a little bit of a catch. But then, you've always got this you can fall back on. All right. I think I'm ready. Like I was saying before about I want my wheel to be real small here. I don't want to go all the way down because I'm just going to start the smaller tool is going to vibrate and I'll just get more chatter in there. So I just did the edge and I'll bet you that the... Stupid question. Oh, there's no such thing. What exactly were you trying to do with the edge? How are you I'm making it a little bit bigger. Making oh. The edge up here? Yes. I'm just making, I'm just curling it because it came straight in a, in a line. Okay. Oh, darn, I want to write his name down. He critiqued a meeting once, years ago. He's a furniture maker. Was he? Yeah. He's still around, he's a furniture master. Living in New Hampshire. Old guy, actually, we're all old. Um, but he critiqued a, a wood turner's meeting, and he, I, I'll never forget the time when he said, a straight line is a missed opportunity. And I thought, because I was looking at my stuff and there were flat spots, and I, you know how I was saying before how the communication, mm -hmm. the message and stuff, that just rung there. That, that, that congealed it for me. I, I realized then, oh, okay, look at the, look at to see if it's straight. Like this is pretty straight, but there's a little bit of a bulb here. I didn't want, it, it was very straight and then it came in. So all I want to do is soften that edge right. and not miss that opportunity. But it's doggone it. Jim, you're my savior here. Come on, you are. I'm trying. It's going to come to me tonight at 2 o'clock in the morning. You're all getting an email. Now I got <laughs> there. So see, nice. just just a little bit of a of a swap, but and it'll be all right for this. So now I can just turn this around, and again, you know, I would put. Well, I'll forget. We don't have time. Clockkeeper. 15 minutes. I know. Pressure. So here's where, again, all the begin with the end of mind and, and you know, design opportunities and all that other stuff. This tenon can become these three feet. Right? All I would do is hollow this out and then carve away the, the, the wood that's not the foot. <laughs> Isn't that a cute way of putting it? And um, 
and I would have that. Or I could put the, I could make this a foot so that it's sitting up, so that it looks like it's uh, got lift and it, the shadow line underneath. Um, if I just cut this off and left it flat, to my mind, and to other people that uh, would, would look at this, they would say, well, it looks like it's melting into the tabletop. So you want to have a little bit of a shadow line to it. It gives it a little bit of elegance. And I would... The scroll up. God love you, man. Um, the scroll up and down. No, I know what he said, but I'm reading as fast as I can. <coughs> oh, God. Osborne. He's not on the list now. Osborne? Ozzy Osborne. No. Ozzy Osborne. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He may have retired. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, they made the furniture with natural. Uh, yeah, a lot of Bentley stuff. Not Dave. <coughs> He's still around. He's still on YouTube. I'll find him. Anyway. So I can, let's say that I was, I'll, I'll, I'll just demonstrate real quick how you could go about this in many different ways. Again, I'm just going to bring the tailstock up for safety reasons. But if I were to make a foot, okay, I wanted to, to leave the, the, the tenon and create a, a stand for it. No, it's an unusual name. So what I'll do is I'll just take the rip of this off. Again, I'm using that. And see how I've just taken away that flat spot down underneath. I can shape that and then I can come in here and I mean, yeah, this is scraping. Let's see, right away I've got all that stuff out of the way. And then with a detail gouge. With a detail gouge, I can come in here and kind of square it up. But. I can't come in here this way and come scraping around like that. Um, but the other thing too is that I have chamfer it and finish off with a shear scrape so that I get rid of all that other junk. Or I can just take it all away and but we'll leave the leg on. I kind of like the foot on this one. I don't have any feet on this one. So I'll do that, stop this. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. That's where a road stretch to the tape. Yeah, yeah, that would be, you know, shrink tape, um, blue tape. But for now, let's just be people of faith. Let's just, you know. I'm crazy about the way this is right. Oh, that's why. Prudence. <laughs> no, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Now you can go the opposite way. What I'm doing is I'm just taking away that little hole. And I have plenty of material because the inside of my bowl is the inside of this bottom, not this bottom. 
So I can, I've got this whole tenon to play with. And I can come over here, engaging the bevel, and I'll turn it this way. So I don't get too many surprises. And I can also come up and swirl off that little foot. Let's just get rid of that little line. One more time. Here we go. That was so much fun to do it again. Using the bottom wing. it's such a small piece, I'm not going to put oil on this because it'll take forever to draw it. So what I use is that free part wood seed oil of the, yeah. the Mylans, but I, Marcel's version of that, and it's Odie's friction, you know, it's one third uh, alcohol is into shellac and linseed. One third, one third, one third. Right. Yeah. Um, it dries very, very quickly, it dries hard, and I also made another discovery. Um, I did a uh, class with, with Anna Marie for a couple of the school teachers. And Justin? Yeah. Justin makes, he raises bees. And he made his own wax and mineral oil stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, why does that smell so good? He adds vanilla to it. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So a little coat of the, that vanilla stuff on here, I'm already like, this is this is really tasty, and then buff that. Didn't let it sit or anything. I just put it on. It, it's spinning in the in the in the lathe. Took a clean paper towel, but I used. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I use one of these because a paper towel they, they shred. They go everywhere. Just don't wrap it around your hand. You know, it, it, it's it'll come right out. But this rag just buff it until it gets warm. And then I'll put that shine on there. And that's what, that's what this is. One coat of each. So within five minutes, I was able to put this back into the chuck and finish off the top. And then drill the hole for the little hand. So the outside is uh, Mahoney's uh, walnut oil. You know, I, 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 use, I, I bought that here. I've always used tongue oil. Um, I tried. A lot of different finishes. Tongue oil is it's inexpensive. Any tongue oil, you know, uh, one of the other brick and mortars in New Hampshire sells a quart of it. And the stuff is as thick as molasses. So by the time I thin thinned it out, I've got almost a gallon of the finish. And you thin it with uh, your uh, paint the mineral spirits. It's uh, it, it's just really. A bigger bowl, you wouldn't want to use friction polish because you start to to apply it here, and then as you're moving over, you're, you've got to keep on applying. It's starting to set up. Then you go back to it, and it's it now it gets gooey, and you got all streaky, and you got a, a god awful mess. If you can put it on in one or two passes without like all of these here, this is kind of big. This piece here would be kind of big for that. But all of the other 
the ins especially the inside of the lid, it works great. The, the wax tends to seal it, and it, it gives the, um, at least for the first hour, it dulls very, very quickly as far as I'm concerned. But this looked like a lacquer. You know, when it was even an hour old, it was fully <coughs> dry, but it wasn't cured. And after it's cured, it, it, uh, it tends to lose its, its brilliance, I think. But they're all, that's, they're all finished. Oh, the only other thing I did was I buffed them because I was bringing them to a wood turner's meeting. Uh, but it's just the uh, rouge. Uh, I didn't go through the whole deal. You know, the white, the, the white diamond and the uh, cardinal diaphragm, which is just the, the red uh, triple leaf. Did you go all the way up to the wax on those, the canoeble wax? No. 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 Have you ever used the tips of canoeble wax and just rub that over the piece? Yeah. Sort of bad? Just as the look finish? Yeah. It's wax finish? Yeah. Um, I, I've never turned a pen, but yeah, that, that's something that uh, works very, very well. It doesn't last as long, I guess, but I would think that the usage and the oils from your hands would then apply finish to the uh, to the pen so that it would one would offset the other. You know? I don't know. Um, where's the where's the name? <laughs> Any more questions? <clears throat> Do you worry about or account for eventual wood movement so you're deliberately a little loose now because we're coming out of summer? Or it depends on when you make it. Yeah. Like I was saying, this piece here in March, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rock, starting to rock now. And two months ago, it was perfectly flat. I remember trying it because it was the beginning of August. Um, but it has no finish on it. Finish, I think, retards the reaction time so that it is not as noticeable, perhaps. But the bigger the piece, the more the movement, the greater the, the chance. And that's where I'll hide them with a lid within a lid, you know, so that this upper here is gonna, is gonna hide that joint. Now all you'll see is this line but you'd have to you have to spin it around. You're only going to see it from one angle, so it, it doesn't make as much of a difference. This is problematic mm -hmm. because this is going to it, it's, it's going to go over. This one does the turn the flop on that one over here. Yeah, yeah he's mm -hmm. starting to. Yeah. Um, and this one here, if you look, there's a little bit of a difference from one side to the other because they they both work differently. Some more than others, but I've never really, I mean, in, in a piece this size, I think that's, that's really cutting hairs, you know? It's just doing it in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the wood is stone dry or it stays stone dry. And then come summertime, I never know where they're going to move because they didn't cut them in the summer. Yeah. The stuff I cut in the summer, I can get it to fit nice and tight in the wintertime and it'll fall off. Yeah. All by itself, it's so loose. And there, there are those that would tell you that you know, like, make, especially with one of these, Ray Key was, was famous for, he would rough turn them, even if they were kiln dry wood, and he would take them together and put them away for a couple of weeks, so that he had the same, he taped them together just so that he could, this one goes with this one, you know? Um, and then he would finish <coughs> turn them after they had acclimated, because it's not so much acclimation into the room that they're in, but we've started, changing the humidity level inside the piece. You're drilling a, a piece here, you see steam coming out. That's moisture, you know, and, and so it, it's not always as, um, like this one here was, this, this tree was from the Shaker Village. I'm trying to remember what year it was, but it's close to 10 years old. So this piece was maybe, six by six, seven by seven, just a block. And I tossed it. <clears throat> but I remember this, this was that <clears throat> blind tree that, uh, that Bob Coleman and I bought. Um, 
So this thing was bone dry. But when I, I pre-drilled a hole because I went in there with an excavating tool, and there was steam coming out of that. Because the moisture out here is 10%. But way down inside here, it couldn't be anything. You know, who knows? So it varies. So they'll tell you, rough it, even if it's kiln dry, let it sit for a while, um, and then come back to it. And it, it, it scares me when you think that you're selling something, and it looks just like this today, but then tomorrow they, they go to it and they're like trying to pull it out. It happened to me, one, true story. It sounds made up, but true story. I had a bowl, probably something like this, okay? And put it on a shelf. I don't know how much time, but enough for me to forget that it was there. Now, six hours from now, I'm walking by this in the house. Like Amy will ask me, what do you think about hanging this picture on the wall? Honey, wherever you like. You know, six hours from now, I'll never see it again. I'll never notice it. So this is up on a shelf or something, not this one, but a bowl, right? Take it down, what the hell is that inside? And go to try to open it. It won't open. Well, there's a trick. You can put it into a microwave for just a few seconds and it'll kind of loosen the wood a little bit. Mm. Yeah, well, if it's full of M&Ms, guess what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> Back in the day, I didn't realize that a microwave can be strong. I put it in a couple minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Threw the bowl away. Made it over. So it, it's that kind of a thing where, you know, um, the chocolate art will make a nice finish on the bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, it's peanut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, enough said. Don't go 